Hello and welcome back to the Widow's Oil. Today I want to talk to you and explain to you what is does it mean, why does the Bible speak of the great harlot and worshipping of the Queen of Heaven? Because those are the same things. If you've read in the Bible, you will read in the Old Testament that the Lord God often um, rebuked Israel for their worship of the Queen of Heaven um, and also the Baal and Asherah. Now, those are all the same, the same worship. And in Revelation, we read in Revelation 18 and 19 of the great harlot called Mystery, Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, at the end of this video, I will show you a few scriptures um, just to get you started if you want to do a study on that. But I want to just simply explain to you what this worship entails. Because I have recently found out that this worship of this harlot is literally the goddess being a harlot. It's not just a church that has apostatized. Um, there is the literal worship of the, the female principal who is a harlot and I'm going to explain it very simply to you. There are two forms of worship in this world. There are only two ways. The one way is where we worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and what that form of worship is, it is the worship of uh, the Heavenly Father by us looking to the Lord Jesus Christ to become a son of God and to by um, bowing before our Heavenly Father and submitting to his discipline, becoming a son or daughter of his. This form of worship relies on discipline and obedience. And we are empowered by the Holy Spirit and through the word of God to follow this way and to be a son or daughter of God. But there is another way, the old way. And that is the form that um, the Bible speaks of that existed in the old Mesopotamia, in Babylon and Persia, and also later in Greece, although in Greece they already had many gods. So the worship of the Queen of Heaven is what everybody else worships. Even Islam worship a feminine God, even though you wouldn't think so. But I'm not going to go in detail. I'm just going to simply tell you all other firm forms of God who do not worship the um, Father are all this form, this other form. And that is the worship of the Great all. Now, in that case, the, the god is actually the goddess. In other words, the daughter. The daughter is the goddess, and she is the number one that they worship. But her father is the devil, and he is num in the number two position. So it's exactly the opposite from what we have in the true faith, where we have the father and the son. In this case, they have daughter and father. The daughter is the goddess and the father is a devil, the devil. So it's a switch around. The Hindus worship this and all other forms of idolatry. Also atheists because they worship um, the creation. They will worship their mind and the intelligence of a man so it's according to Romans 1 the worship of the creation uh, above the creator um, and that is the same also as mother earth worship so simply speaking all of mankind worship this goddess now if you speak to those who know the truth about this ancient worship they will tell you the goddess is a harlot and that is why it involves fornication and sexual immorality. You will remember in Revelation 3 where Jesus speaks against 
the prophetess Jezebel. He says she teaches her servants to eat food sacrificed to idols. That means false doctrines. False doctrines is food sacrificed to idols because doctrines and the word of God is spiritual food. And so false doctrines is food, spiritual food to, that we eat that is sacrificed to idols. And then it also says about Jezebel, is she teaches my people to practice sexual immorality. So when we have the worship of the goddess or the queen of heaven or the Asherah, what we will see is we will see that women will be in the spiritual um, dominant position and that it will be a worship system which has to do with emotions and feelings and romantic type of doctrines like the bride of Christ doctrine, which is heavily pushed. Now, look, we know that there is such a thing as the bride of Christ, but we also know in Christianity, Christianity is the wife of the lamb. So this um, bride of Christ teaching that Hebrew roots uh, teaches is a perfect example of the worship of the queen of heaven. Um, and we will also see in that, that is why Christianity is looking like it is, Besides the fact that you have women dominating and men not um, taking up their role, you also have a lot of fornication and sexual immorality and you have the woman dressing in ways that are inappropriate. And you have the lifting up of women either as being career women above being mothers and wives or otherwise you have um, the objectification and sexualization of girls where they are allowed to dress uh, in inappropriate ways and are not taught the um, bitter fruits that come from sexual immorality for her and her children in the future. So that is what the worship of the great whore is, that the people of the world literally worship the whore because they say she is all merciful, she is only mercy, and they feel that being judged is harsh and evil. So they see the true Father God who, who wants justice as being cruel and unloving, and they feel they must be able to do whatever they like without there being consequences. So people will generally say, um, it's not my business what somebody else does as long as it doesn't harm others. The problem is sin does harm others and sin, sin does have consequences. Um, and so when we turn the other way and we tolerate sin um, and we tolerate false teaching, then we are like Cain who says, am I my brother's keeper? We are supposed to be our brother's keeper and we are especially supposed to be the keeper of the youth for they are the future. But people do not do that. We have bought into the lie and so the whole world is currently worshipping the Queen of Heaven and much of the Christian church have been swept away to literally worship the Queen of Heaven even though they take the name of Jesus, they are only his by name because it says in the scripture, in that day, seven women will say, let us, we will eat our own food and wear our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name to take away your shame. And we remember in Revelation, there are th seven churches. So in the end of days, the, the churches the churches say that they will have their own spiritual food, which they will offer to idols, and they will have their own spiritual clothes, meaning their own form of righteousness, not the righteousness of Jesus Christ. They will only take the name of Jesus Christ to take away their reproach. And that is apostasy. 
that is standing on the precipice of the great apostasy. And so people should understand what the worship of the Queen of Heaven entails. And that that is why the whole world um, bows to the, the system that um, worships the Queen of Heaven. So one of the best known places where we learn about the mother of harlots, the great whore, who gives birth to all the other harlots, meaning false religions, um, is in Revelation 17. And it says there, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which is the devil, um, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead was a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And then, and when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. So there is so much to say about that. But today I just want to point out that this is describing to us this mother of harlots. And as you can see, she's drunk with the blood of the saints. Even with Cain and Abel, Abel was the first one that was slain. Um, due to Cain wanting to worship in his own way. What this um, harlot does is she gives birth to many, many false religions, but it's still that ancient worship of the great whore, the goddess in, uh, that came from Babylon. That is why we see her, for example, in many different places and people say it is America or it is the Roman Catholic Church um, or it is this or that. They have many places they point to, but the thing is, it is all those things because the system that's set up there is, is worshipping the great whore. The prophet Jeremiah also explains this worship of the whore um, when he speaks of the worship of the queen of heaven, uh, where, he, where he says the following. Do you not see what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women need dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven, and they pour out drink offerings to other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, says the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the shame of their own faces? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, my anger and my fury will be poured out on this place, on man and on beast, on the trees of the field and on the fruit of the ground, and it will burn and not be quenched. So in one of my previous videos, I spoke about the fact that um, it is a family affair, this. It's the children, the father and the mother who do this together. Um, it was in my video regarding the false doctrine of the so-called Bride of Christ. I will link that video below in the description box. Um, which that doctrine is especially prominent in the Hebrew roots movement. So you can see, yeah, and the, the Lord says it will lead to shame of face because it is very shameful. It leads to sexual immorality um, and not only fornication, but to sexual abuse in families. This is very serious people. And that is why I said in my previous videos where I spoke about the scandal in the International House of Prayer, um, which is yet another sexual abuse scandal of a leader that um, abused uh, the trust of young women. Um, and I said that a fire will come 
and it will it will burn in in the Christian church. Um, there is already the fire of false doctrine, but the Lord will send the cleansing fire, and He says it will burn and not be quenched. So people need to repent from this. We need to return to the pure worship which focuses on the scripture and doesn't focus on music and all sorts of end times theology that makes everybody scared and terrified and give them a spirit of fear instead of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I have um, pulled up 27 Bible verses about serving Asherah. Asherah is nothing else than the queen of heaven and her consort is Baal and in the Old Testament the Lord was constantly speaking against the worship of Baal and Asherah which was the feminine um, so I will put this link of this these 27 scriptures also for you in the description box below um, or you could just pause and read all these scriptures and do a study yourself if you want to. So Asherah is the queen of heaven, the goddess, the, the great whore, and Baal is the devil. And the, Israel was very much embroiled in that. And the modern day Israel, the spiritual Israel, Christianity now is very much caught up in it again. So the worship of the Asherah or the Queen of Heaven is linked to temple prostitution. And so therefore you get a form of um, spirituality that is abominable to God. Um, and it involves uh, making the body of Christ one with the harlot. It is very abominable and deadly. It leads also to physical manifestation of fornication and uncleanness.